It's been one year since protest and civil unrest broke out following the murder of George Floyd. In Grand Rapids, thousands of people took to the streets marching for justice, calling for change after several high-profile killings at the hand of police, then destruction by a separate group turning the city upside down, leaving behind millions of dollars in damage. Today, Fox 17 is looking back on both sides of what turned out to be a historic night in West Michigan as the city continues picking up the pieces and law enforcement continues changing the fabric of policing. Take a look. Once it was an unlawful assembly, it became a riot. F the police! I'll only let you talk if you're not going to swear on television. The chaos all caught on camera in the end an estimated $2 million in damage done to businesses and property downtown Grand Rapids during the civil unrest following George Floyd's death. An unarmed man killed at the hands of police. Since then, more than 1,068 other people have been killed by police in the United States, according to research and advocacy by mapping police violence. Grand Rapids Police Chief Eric Payne keenly aware of this violence coming from departments across the nation, where statistically cops kill three people every day in the U.S., another startling stat from mapping police violence. Did you feel like it was your responsibility to implement changes into the department based on your experience there? There's a lot of things that we have been doing. Um, uh, one of the big things that came out of it was the A can't wait, and there was a number of things, no chokeholds. Uh, banning chokeholds, um, shooting at moving vehicles, um, and six others. Chief Payne was sworn in July of 2019. Less than a year later, he would go toe-to-toe -to -toe with one of the largest uprising events in Grand Rapids history. So we've had a number of listening sessions with different groups and different people. After debriefing the civil unrest, Chief Payne putting together a strategic plan with three prongs, ensuring communities feel safe at all times, incorporating innovation, policing differently, and engaging with the community. So we spoke with community members to see their thoughts on police community relations one year later. We're not anti-cops. We're anti-bad cops. There are some bad apples in these departments. This is Tawana Gordon, the cousin of Breonna Taylor, a young EMT who was shot and killed in her home after police broke into her apartment, says the endless people killed by police even after George Floyd is why she's working to be part of the solution. The ethnicity of diverse communities are just frustrated because it's like, OK, when do we get a pause to breathe before there's another incident before there's another police brutality or police killing of a of black or brown descendant people and it's it just needs to stop it's just it's emotionally draining Tawana now working with Michigan representative Tanisha Yancey from Detroit introducing two new bills putting limitations on no-knock warrants and excessive force used by police and a social activist like Tawana worked to change laws to protect people from police, departments across the country scrambling to crack the code and stop the violence. Um, I think it was an awakening for everyone. Again, building those relationships, and we're going to do that through our strategic plan and implementing every, the things that we've said we would do. Um, we look to avoid such situations in the future. Tawana says an official introduction of that bill will be announced in the coming days. One of her long-term goals is to lead a charge in defunding the police through demilitarization, requesting therapists in uniforms, and shining a spotlight on police brutality. Chief Payne went on to say the budget they've recently approved has not moved nor changed.